Welcome makers. Today's tutorial is this beautiful lei. It is inspired by both a Tongan kahoa and a Fijian salu salu. I've shared a similar style tutorial for an orchid kahoa with the layers of tea leaf, baby's breath, and orchids. Today we're adding a layer of fowl, which is most commonly used as the base of a Fijian salu salu. The first thing I'm going to do is prepare my tea leaf and weave it as I would for a kahoa. If you need a refresher on this step, I will link our tutorial in the description box. Today I'm making a child size lay for a baptism. A few weeks ago, I shared a gie gie tutorial made out of fowl, which is hibiscus bark. In Tongan, it is called fowl, in Hawaiian, hao, and in Fijian, vow. I will link the online suppliers that I know of. I recently ordered a couple bundles for this project and another gie gie tutorial I'm working on. This is the lei I'm using to learn from today. This lei is from my brother's wedding, which was two and a half years ago. I hung it up to dry and it has dried beautifully. I do not know who it was made by, but my auntie brought these from Hawaii for the wedding. Looking at the back of the lei, there are several steps to keep the fowl in place. The bottom loop has a string of fowl going through it. There is a string of fowl that twists around each loop. There are also two white sections of lei twine. The bottom one is twisted around the fowl and the foam plates are sewn into that twist with red curling ribbon. The red ribbon was also used to sew on the design made from fa, baby's breath, and tea leaf roses. The fowl is braided into the top section of white lay twine. To create the fowl layer, I will be using the same materials, white lay twine and fowl. I have my new bundle as well as some other scraps that I will use as string. I'm putting the dried lay on top of my tea leaf base so I can envision what a finished lay might look like. Because of the fresh flowers I'm using, my design will not use the individual kakala pieces, but I think that style is so beautiful and I'm excited to create that style in the near future. Here is what my bundle of fowl looks like. I used ribbon to practice and also measure how long I need to cut my fowl so I can make the best use of it. You can make the loops any length and width according to your preference. I think the loops in the example lay I have will work well for the children's lay. I'm cutting a piece of fowl 11 inches long. For an adult lay, I would cut at least 12 inches and I would also make the width of my loops a little bigger. You can cut the fowl, it can also be easily torn into sections. I will use the skinnier pieces as my string. To make my double loop, I am folding the bottom end back about a third of the way. Then from the top, fold down your fowl and line it up with the end of the back piece you folded and crease it. From there, make your top loop by folding the top piece back up. Both ends of your piece and the crease part in the center should line up. Next, take a piece of fowl and tie those layers together with a double knot.
I used about 25 loops for the child size lay. Now I'm going to braid them in following the method on the dry lay I have. I'm also braiding in both ends from the piece of fowl used to tie the layers together. This is really what I'm counting on to keep my fowl loops in place because even if you braid it tightly, they can still be pulled out. The pattern that I'm following is inserting a foul loop and braiding a few times, then bringing the extra ends from the previous loop and braiding those in as well, and repeating the process for your desired length. Here's my finished fowl layer. I'm trimming away any extra pieces of fowl that are sticking out. I'm going to layer my tea leaf and fowl to see how it looks. On one side, I'm going to combine the end of my tea leaf base and fowl layer by tying them in a knot. Then I'm going to take out the braids I did and re-braid it into one strand. I did decide to trim the tea leaf a little bit. If this was an adult size lay, I would have left it, but I didn't want the lay to look too big on the child. Here's our lay so far, and I think it looks great. Going back to look at our example lay, there is a layer where they twisted lay twine around the fowl and then sewed the foam plate onto that layer. I'm going to skip this step because I'm not doing a Kakala style lay and also because I have the tea leaf layer and the lay twine from that that I can sew through. But depending on the flowers and style you're doing, you may want to add that step. I'm getting out some of my foul scraps. I am tying this onto the last loop on one of my ends and twisting it around each loop twice. If your foul piece is too short, just tie another piece onto your original piece to keep wrapping. When I get all the way through, I'm going to tie it, tie it in a knot on the other end. Next I'm taking a piece of fowl through each bottom loop.
To tie off the end, I am tying it to the end of the foul piece we used to twist around the top of the leg. The two layers need to be attached and your method may vary depending on your top layer. If I was using foam plates for my design, I would sew or staple my flowers on except for the tea leaf layer and sew on all the foam plates like we have done in other tutorials. The flowers that I'm using today are baby's breath and white orchids. I'm actually going to sew them using the method we used in our carnation kahoa. So I'm taking sections of baby's breath and sewing through my tea leaf layer and the lay twine of my tea leaf layer. I fold down the stem and sew it down as well. For the orchids, I placed my first orchid at the top and sewed a loop around the stem. My next orchid I placed sideways on the top of the stem of that top orchid and sewed around the stem as well. Here is our finished lay. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel and let us know what you'd like to see next.